start and you can try to rejoin. I'm, I don't have any idea why Google Meet is doing something like that. Maybe the account is not the institutional one. Okay. Uh, do you know this guy, Pavan? Can you just text in to try to reconnect and um, maybe with the institutional account? Because I don't know what's going on. Okay. So let us start just right away with the first topic behind the introduction that we made uh, yesterday that is uh, the kinematics. We are talking about kinematics. What's kinematics? Okay, kinematics in a, in a sense is the relationship between the joint position and the, the end effector position orientation. Okay, everything fine. And the end effector position orientation. Okay. We will discuss this relationship now with the, the manipulator still, so without moving. Then the next topic will be differential kinematics when we will, do, we will discuss about how the velocities map from the joint to the end effector. So now we are just interested in the static relationship between the joint and the end effect. However, before discussing about direct kinematics, that is the first I mean, topic where we really enter into the, the, the direct kinematics of a robot, and direct we will understand what that is mean, we need to, for some of you to repeat from some other is totally new, but we need first some mathematical background on the orientation representation. And uh, this is something totally new for most of uh, the students on uh, uh, computer science or automatic control even. It's totally new. Maybe the students with a background in mechanical engineering, they had some uh, concept like that. We will go through. I mean, it's not difficult, but the first impression could be a little bit annoying. Okay, first of all, now I would like to use uh, the blackboard. Let me see if uh, I, mean, I can connect or if, if I can do it without. Uh, first of all, here we have uh, a rigid body, okay? And uh, a rigid body in, uh, in the space, in the three-dimensional Cartesian space, attached to the rigid body a reference frame. So here you can see O prime, this origin of this reference frame, and then X prime, Y prime, and Z prime. Okay. It is attached to it, and everything is rigid. In order to represent the position of this rigid body, I need to define a word or inertial or fixed frame. And this will be represented with the symbol uh, sigma, uppercase symbol, this is the Greek letter sigma, with a certain origin of the frame and then the unit vector x, y, z. The representation of the position of the rigid body is trivial, it's very easy, because I just need to represent its origin, the origin of the frame attached to it, O prime. And this is done easily with the three coordinates. This is a concept of well-known um, representation of a point in a, in a uh, reference frame. So now, okay. So now, 
Uh, a little bit of symbology. Uh, let me repeat it, or maybe it's the first time. We will use the lowercase boldface to represent the vectors. We will use the uppercase boldface to represent matrices. And we will use the normal mathematical font to represent the scalars. Okay? Uh, there will be exceptions, but for a reason, and I will underline when. But this is the convention that we are going to do. So just pay attention here at this vector. We have O prime, that is bold face, because it's a vector, equal. For us, the symbol of a vector are the square brackets. It's a convention. It's not uniformly used, accepted. Someone use round brackets. I use the square brackets. And those three are scalars, OK? Because this is normal font. Now, it may be difficult to notice here in the class, because you are a few meters from, uh, from, the, from the screen. But on the slides, it, could be, it should be very easy to, to see. These symbols means that the vector uh, is in the, um, uh, in the set of uh, the three-dimension real numbers. OK, so it is a vector of dimension 3. Or I can say also a vector of dimension 3 by 1. Is redundant three by one, but when we will have also matrices, sometimes you also say three by one or, or, or whatever. For the representation of the position, that's all. We don't need anything more. We will see later on the, the velocities and so on, but for the position, we don't need anything else. For the orientation, now we need to, to, to discuss a little bit. And uh, today, we will see different way to represent the orientation of a rigid body with respect to a certain frame. Okay. It is a concept that is totally new for you and we need to think a little bit about. Okay, first of all, one possible way to represent this orientation is to say, okay, I have the unit vectors attached to the rigid body, if I just represent the coordinates of this unit vector in the reference frame, I have all the information that I need to understand the orientation. That's true. This is the reference frame. Those three are the unit vector. I just need to, to have their coordinates in the reference frame and I have all the information that I need, okay? So let me see how can I represent it. Now, this is the three dimension, and we will see later on the, some example. X prime, this is a vector, can be represented by its three component on X, Y, Z. Those are unit vectors, so each component need a scalar, of course. So we need to scale the unit vector. This number, here it is written as x prime with subscript x. Okay, so this, the notation make you understand that this is the projection of xy on the x unit vector. And this is easily computed.
Hello. Let us wait for you were, I think, three remotely. Okay, hello, the two of you. I, I, I need, I missed the other one. Uh, Ferraro, quando vi siete scollegati? Ma un minuto fa. Va bene, allora così funziona, diciamo. L'altro giorno per mezz'ora. Ok, uh, Samyukta, I just asked uh, when you were disconnected, so just one minute. Uh, let us wait a few seconds for the other students uh, in order to allow him to reconnect. Okay. While we are here, um, may I ask uh, all the students of mechanical engineering, what is uh, your background? Let us start uh, uh, with you, uh, Samyuk Tanola. Uh, I'm from mechanical engineering. I did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering. Okay. Can you just tell uh, uh, me the, uh, where you got your uh, under, undergraduate title and uh, where are you from? What is your nationality? I'm from India. I got it from uh, Usman. Okay. Thank you. Can yeah, I ask? Sorry? No, Ben. Questo è lei. Can I ask the same to you? Uh, from India. Uh, mechanical? Okay. Both of you. Okay. And you're both? Sorry? Okay. And you're both from uh, uh, India? Okay. We, we had another student uh, yesterday with um, a name that didn't, didn't seem... Sorry? No, 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 it didn't seem to be Indian with a, with a spelling that seems to be different. Okay, so definitely the four of you will follow this class. Okay, okay, the other, the other changed their mind, but Pavan is not reconnecting. Is? You have, I, I, I don't hear anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, from inside, okay. Guys, it's, uh, you don't say it. Uh, can you just put over like, just one second? Here. He's coming here. He's coming up. Actually, he's in there. Also, there are uh, uh, four internet, internet management. He, he okay. has network issues. Uh, he's okay. So, uh, I have to continue. Okay, okay, we are recording also this conversation. Uh, the, uh, when uh, the, the record stops, uh, I notice I, I, the, the, sh the screen sharing also stops. So I have to remember to do it again. So if I forget it, please remind it to me. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, the idea of uh, one possible orientation representation. Now, let us try to, to, to put it in a more compact way. And I can say that, okay, I call this object a rotation matrix. And actually it is a matrix where I do put the three vectors, one side by side to the other, okay? So each vector has three elements, three vector, my matrix is three by three. And this is why here I have a three by three, okay? Now, this is a, a three by three matrix. Each of the nine elements can be written as this scalar product, as we just saw in the previous page. So it's simply the projection of X prime on X. Do you understand this notation? What does it mean, X prime, this up, uh, upscript TX? Is it clear to everyone? Okay, this is a transposition. Why? 
because vectors are column. Okay, so I don't have to, to say column vector or row vector. Vectors are column. When I want to make the projection, I need to have a row vector multiplied by a column vector. So transpose the first and leave it as it is the second, and the result is a scalar. Now let me try to connect again on the share blackboard. No, it's not working. Okay, it is not working. Uh, if I use my blackboard on my back, do you think this could be without? Because otherwise I have to interrupt and take the, the external video camera. But for this very simple concept, let me try with that. So very basically, I have three numbers here. And the scalar product is basically the product of the first line by the first column. And this is the scalar that we define in this way. Okay? So those are vectors, and this is the scalar. This is why there is a transpose there. Okay. I can use this area, you know. I will try to solve the issue with the, with the shared blackboard for next uh, lesson. Just to let you know, I used yesterday uh, at 8 p.m. And, uh, and I'm using since... Uh, the beginning of the lockdown and this is the first time that uh, we got issue okay but the concept of rotation is intuitively but we can demonstrate it, but intuitively is a concept that requires three degrees of freedom and i have uh, nine numbers here so let me think can i just put nine numbers randomly and pretend that this is a rotation matrix no i cannot because those numbers are not independent one each other there are some constraints in those nine numbers and actually we do have six constraints we have uh, three constraints of ortho orthogonality among the unit vectors. We made this assumption. The unit vector are orthogonal one each other. It means that the scalar product of uh, each of the unit vectors uh, for by one of the other two should be zero because they are orthogonal and the scalar number is the cosinus between the two vectors if i remember the concept of geometry so we have three constraints on orthogonality and then we also decided to work with the unit norms the unit vector so we need to add the three unit norm constraints and the constraints of unit norm is basically this one. Because this is the projection on a vector on itself that has a unit norm. So it's, it is its norm one. Okay? 
So I just remind the concept of uh, geometry. And uh, if I want to have fun, I can demonstrate that those constraints give to the rotation matrix a couple of properties. First of all, the transpose of a rotation matrix multiplied by the rotation is equal to the identity matrix. This is very easy. You just need to transpose this one. And you made the, the, the multiplied by R, you made all the multiplication. And you notice that all only the element on the diagonal are one, because actually those are the element on the diagonal. And the element outside of the diagonal are zero. So it is an identity matrix. And, and thus, it means that for rotation matrices, we have this very nice property. The inverse is equal to the transpose. This is true only for specific matrices, among which the rotation matrices. It means that we don't, we don't have to compute the inverse of a rotation matrix, because we just take its transpose. OK? It's very nice. The determinant on the rotation matrix is always 1, plus or minus 1. For us, it will be 1. OK? OK, so this is uh, a first way. Now, let us compute the rotation matrix for elementary rotations. We will use the convention that the positive sense is counterclockwise. OK? Now, what does it mean? It means simply that, I mean, is a convention. Positive is a positive angle is counterclockwise. Of course, you have to to think a little bit on the fact that if you look at rotation from the other way around, what you see as a, as a, as a counterclockwise is clockwise, of course. So now you have to think the way it says is the uh, vettore personificato. You have to think uh, as you put yourself uh, with the feet on the on the basis of the vector and uh, with the, your head on the hard row of the vector, and you look at the rotation. Okay, so counterclockwise is positive if you take the place of the the vector around which you are making the rotation. Let me. Those concepts are uh, already known not only to the mechanical engineering, but also to the people that make computer graphics. For computer science, without computer graphics, no. The now, this is counterclockwise, this is a positive, a positive rotation around this unit vector or unit vector, okay? But if you look at uh, here, this guy here sees a positive, uh, a, a clockwise, so a negative rotation. So just, we should pay attention to this. Now, if we want to make this uh, elementary rotation, Here, uh, this is an elementary rotation around it. Okay, let me make it on the on the plane. The angle alpha, for example. This is a, an elementary rotation. Now, what is the rotation matrix of this rotation? In this case, 
if I represent uh, a three-dimensional plot on a plane, I have to use a certain symbol here to make the people understand if the Z is going out or in from the blackboard. In this case, it's going out. And this is the symbol. In, uh, I, this is the symbol going here, okay? So now Z is going out. The rotation matrix, This is the first of the nine elements. Now, the projection of the unit vector on X. The scalar product. This is one, the norm, multiplied by the cosinus of alpha. This guy here is cosinus of alpha. So we just saw the first of the nine elements of this rotation matrix. Cosinus alpha. We don't need to make all the nines. Let me just you know, go quickly. The, the projection of X prime on Y is sinus of alpha. And then the projection on Z is at zero because they are orthogonal. This is X prime, okay? The rotation is around the horizontal plane and this is vertical, so it's zero. The projection on Y prime is the same. I mean, conceptually is the same. We have minus sinus, cosinus, and zero. And then the projection on Z prime along z well we are not changing z prime because we are rotating around z prime but the projection is itself zero zero one the coordinates didn't change we have just computed the simplest rotation matrix the rotation around z nine by nine elements if we want to, to spend a few minutes, uh, we can also verify that the six constraints here are satisfied. We could uh, compute the determinant, and also you can have fun and you can uh, verify that R transpose multiplied by R is equal to identity matrix. Okay, so this is a rotation matrix. It's not very convenient to represent an orientation with the nine numbers that has a lot of constraints among them. But uh, this is the first step that we do into the, the rotation, orientation representation. Okay. I leave you as an exercise to compute the other two rotations. So an elementary rotation of an angle, uh, generic angle beta around Y. And if you can see here, this is the, the, the second column is Y prime projected on Y. And since we are rotating around Y, it is unchanged. So its coordinates are is zero one zero and then of course we have uh, cosinus and sinus the same for the rotation around x in fact we can also verify another property of this elementary rotation if i take uh, the rotation around x, y, or z, one of the three, of uh, a negative angle, this is equal to the transpose of the positive angle rotation. Okay. So this is in the first interpretation of uh, 
the matrix, the rotation matrix, as an operator. We will have three interpretations now. This is the first one. It is an operator that allow us to align two frames, to go from sigma to sigma prime, okay? <clears throat> For the moment, we just saw three elementary uh, rotations. This is true for any kind of rotation, and we'll see later on the, the rotation around the generic axis. But this is the first interpretation of the rotation matrix. Okay. Now, let's see a second property of the rotation matrix, of the, uh, of the rotation operator as, as a function. Now, this plot, I mean, uh, it's, it's easy. Let's see what is this plot. Let's first focus uh, on uh, the frame, uh, reference frame X, Y, and Z. And I have a certain point P. This point P has its coordinates, so the projection on Z is P on Z, and then I have uh, the projection on X and the projection on Y. Then I take another frame that I did not do with prime, X prime, Y prime, Z prime, and I project the same point P on this new reference frame that has the same origin of the first one. So I have two frames with the same origin. Now, what is the relationship of uh, the two coordinates of P? P is the same, the point is the same, but clearly it has two different coordinates in the two frames, because of course the frame are different, so the projection are different. It can be demonstrated, we will uh, do it uh, a, a simple example uh, on, on the plane, that uh, I can obtain uh, P from P prime and vice versa if I have the rotation matrix between the two frames. And the relationship is very easy. P is equal rotation matrix multiplied by P prime. How can I obtain P prime? Well, I have to left multiply by the inverse of the matrix. When I have situation like that. If I want to get pay prime, I need to make the inverse of this one. Now, we do know that First of all, I have to ask myself, okay, I'm going to invert the matrix. Is it a full rank matrix? Yes, because the determinant of a rotation matrix is always one or minus one. Okay, so I can do it. Then, uh, matrix multiplication is not commutative, so I need to say I have to left multiply by the inverse of the rotation matrix. I know that it exists, so this is equal to the identity. It means that P prime is equal to R minus 1 P. But I know that I do not need to compute the inverse of a rotation matrix. I just need to transpose it. Okay? This is the relationship between there's the two representations of the same point in two frames with different orientation. As long as I know the rotation matrix between the two frames, 
I can represent the, the point in the two frames. I think that, I mean, why we, we, we need all these basics? I mean, I'm studying robotics. I have a lot of rigid bodies, and each of the rigid bodies will have a frame attached to it. So I need to understand the, the different kind of representations. Okay. Uh, this is a very simple example. Uh, let me just uh, sketch. I don't. I will not ask for the demonstrations in the end of uh, during the exam. Okay, but let me just sketch a little bit a demonstration just to to try to to fix a little bit better the ideas and to try to to understand a little bit better where it comes from, for example, that uh, P is equal R by uh, P prime. So, for example, here, uh, here yeah, look, this is the no notation I told you before. It means that Z is going out from the, from the slide here, okay? With this symbol here. So now, if I want to Now, I want to compute Px. Now, Px, this is alpha. Okay. I define this as a gamma. I need it for the demonstration. Let me just do it a little bit better than you. Alpha. And gamma, two Greek letters, Px is equal the length of P multiplied by the cosinus of this angle here. So this equal the length of P multiplied by cosinus alpha plus gamma. But I do remember some trigonometry. And uh, I just have to notice that, uh, so consignus of alpha plus gamma is cosinus alpha multiplied cosinus gamma minus sine alpha, alpha sinus uh, gamma. So I just made the computation. And I, I have just to notice that this guy here is the projection on, on uh, y. So this is p prime x prime with gamma. OK? And this is exactly what is written here. That's it. So, now we have the second interpretation of uh, was it visible or less? <laughs> Sì, cioè non si vede benissimo quando ha usato i caratteri piccoli, però considerando che c'è anche la slide... Va bene. Uh, uh, yes, and sorry for that, I will, uh, I, will I, mean, I will fix the issue with the shared blackboard for next lesson, or I will switch to the external uh, camera. Ok, so we have... Uh, a second interpretation of this operator as uh, a tool that allow us 
to transform Ok, adesso la vedo. Sì, aspettiamo la collega. Anche questo non mi è mai successo. Col wifi, anche col, col wifi ho lavorato pure. Oppure ero sempre col cavo. Abbiamo perso la collega. Vabbè, questo è registrato, per cui magari vado avanti. Questo di che può essere causa del wifi? Oppure causa mia? Ok. Eh, che se... Lo farò più volte questo errore. Ok, let us continue. So now we have, uh, if I use this uh, operator, I have uh, a vector with the same norm, but rotated by an amount and around a direction that is indicated by the matrix R. Uh, welcome back, we just uh, restarted. So, we can verify that the, the norm is unchanged by just making a couple, I mean, two passages. The norm the square norm of uh, P is P transpose P, okay? But uh, we can substitute R P prime to P. So here I have R P prime, and then here I have a P prime transpose R transpose. We do remember we, when we have matrix multiplications and we transpose all, we also have to invert the order of the matrix. But R transpose R is the identity matrix. So it means that the norm of the vector is unchanged. Okay? And this is exactly the graphical representation of what I've just said. P and P prime, they do have coordinates whose relationship is given by P equal 
R P prime. And this means that uh, the third use that I can do of the rotation matrix is to rotate vector within the same frame. Here, I let you as an exercise to verify this numerically, but is it exactly the same that we just done? We just define this angle as gamma. We compute Px as P cosinus gamma plus alpha. And then we notice that uh, this is cosinus gamma plus alpha can be written as cosinus cosinus minus sinus sinus. And then that I have P prime X and P prime Oops. Okay. And uh, we have done with the three interpretation of the rotation matrix. This is a, a recap. So the rotation matrix gives the orientation of a frame with respect to the another frame. It represents a coordinate transformation of the same point in two different frames, or it allows the rotation of a, of a, a vector, of a point, within the same frame. Those are the three interpretations and the three use that you can do of a rotation matrix. Okay, but up to now, I've just seen uh, elementary rotations. I cannot go far with elementary rotations. So let us try to understand a little bit how can, can I compose the rotations, okay? Okay, in order to understand it, uh, I need first to define three reference frame, and I just use the subscript uh, zero, one, and two for the three frames, okay? And then uh, I have uh, the same vector expressed in the three frames, and I use the upper script zero, one, and two for this vector. I do know that the inverse is equal to the, the transpose, but I use a, a new notation. This notation will follow us for all the, the course. So I use a certain matrix, in this case R, of course, is rotation, with the subscript I and the upper script J. This means the rotation from J to I. Uh, the rotation as exactly i with respect to j so the rotation from j to i this is a notation okay we just have to to know that we use this notation this convention and it can be different in the various textbooks of course we know that the inverse is equal to the transpose because it's a rotation matrix so this is just a, a matter of notation. And we already know that we can write that the same point in the two frames can be expressed by mean or the rotation matrix. So here, I'm just using this to make you verify where is the use of the convention, okay? So if you want a way to memorize it, Those are the frames, okay? Those are the frames. So, P expressed in frame one, P expressed in frame two. The convention says that those two 
frame should match in those two. Okay, so this is rotation from two to one. It's a choice. And we will follow this choice. The textbook will follow this choice, the textbook that I'm using. Not will, but decide 20, 30 years ago this choice. And a lot of textbook has this one, some others has another choice. Okay, so this is true for all the three frames. The point is one. The frames are three. And we already know that we can represent the coordinates in the three frames if we know the rotation that relates the three frames. This means that if I look at the second row and I substitute P represented in frame one with this expression, it means that uh, I have this equality. The rotation from zero to two can be expressed as two rotations, but we should pay attention here. The rotation, the second rotation is expressed with respect to the previous frame. R01, R12. Okay? The, 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 the terminology that we use is that uh, we are computing the rotation in current frame. Every time that I add another rotation, I compute this with respect to the previous one. And of course, it means that I'm always changing the rotation. Why do I need to compute this very strange stuff? Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to build the mathematical tool that I need in order to arrive at the rotation of the end effect because it will be a composition of the rotation of all the rigid links, okay? Then just building some mathematics. Okay. This is just a repetition. However, I might have made another choice to have the successive rotation with respect always to the original frame, to the same initial frame. In such a case, is it possible to verify that the sequence of the operation is simply inverted? So for the fixed frame rotation, I need to invert the operations. I need to know I will make an example in order to make you understand why it is different to, to, to compute the rotation with respect to the current frame or always with respect to in a, a original frame. So let us consider two rotations in current frame and let us consider really the, the example of those two rotations. So, this is a, a book. I have uh, X, Y, and Z. Okay? And they make a first rotation around Z. So, this is the first rotation. So I don't have to say no, current or fixed frame, it's just a first rotation. And I come up with this rotation this orientation for the book, okay? Just a rotation around Z, 90 degrees. Now, let us impose a rotation around Y in current frame. Now, Y is here now, okay? So a rotation in current frame is this one, 90 degrees, and the book arrives in this orientation, okay? Let's just memorize it, nothing important now. Now let us do the same rotations in current frame, first around Y and then around current Z. 
the starting point of the book is the same. Around Y, this is the orientation, around Z, and this is the orientation. Okay, we have done those two couple of rotations in current frame. Let's do the same in fixed frame. And let's see what's going on. So, Z, Y, and Y, Z. The same two rotation in fixed frame. Z, well, it's the same. We start from the same orientation. The first rotation is the same, is the same, okay. But now, we rotate around Y in a fixed frame. It means that we rotate around Y in the original frame. So now, this is the rotation that I'm going to do. And this is the, the rotation. The final orientation of the book is different. This was the final orientation of the book with the same two rotation in current frame. Now I made the same two rotation in fixed frame and it's different. Okay, so it is important to specify in what frame I'm making the orientation. And if I make the same YZ in fixed frame, why the first rotation is the same as the previous one in current frame, of course, because there is the C. Then Z is the Z of the fixed frame, and it means that the final orientation is different. Any of you notice something? If I wanted only to show that fixed and current frame rotation composition or rotation is different, I could have used only one example. Any of you notice what's going on? Why I, I, I mean, this is an example taken from the textbook. Why the professor uses two examples that are apparently similar. Those are the two rotations in current frame. Two couple of rotations. Two rotations in a fixed sample and two rotations in a second example. And those two are the two rotation in fixed frame, two couples of rotation. The final orientation of the book here is a down, and this is, let me say, up. Up, down. So the reverse order means that in the end, if I change the interpretation, this is Z, Y in, uh, in current frame, is the same of Y, Z in fixed frame. Okay, so reverse order of rotation, changing the interpretation. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm skipping the, 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 the break because we had a lot of small breaks uh, and voluntary, but let's continue because you have a class at 11, right? All of you, the two, uh, both the, the classes. Okay, so now, Rotation matrices are nice. We are going to use a lot of rotation matrices. But is it a way to have a more compact representation of the orientation? If I want to, to tell to my colleagues the, the, the orientation of this object, is it necessary that I give to him or to her nine numbers? No. I can use alternative representation. And we will see now, uh, today, and we will use uh, in, in the exercise quite a lot, three different alternative orientation representations. Conceptually, it's not a big deal, but why we are going to use, in the end, four orientation representations? 
because none of them is uh, superior to the others in all the possible use that we are going to, to make. In fact, if you look at the li software libraries of computer graphics, for example, or robotics, of course, you will notice that uh, they all have uh, the possibility to provide different orientation representation. So the fact that you are going to study different, four different representations is not a waste of time or, 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 or uh, a arbitrary decision of the professor or mine is because depending on the situation we may need one representation or the other okay? first of all Euler angles Euler angles are attractive because they are a minimal orientation representation I say okay but I need three independent numbers for, for a rotation let me say, I know it by intuition, okay? I don't care about the rotation that has nine numbers. Let me use three. And uh, if I make three elementary rotations, for me, it should be possible to obtain any rotation in the space. That's true. Okay, if you play a little bit with the elementary rotation, you have uh, three possible axes, X, Y, and Z, and you can make three rotations around three angles. In the end, you have uh, 27 possible combinations. If you exclude uh, the trivial cases, for example, three rotation around X. Of course, you, you are not doing anything useful. You have 12 possible useful combination. They all are Euler angles representations, but we will focus on two different ones. Z, Y, Z in current frame and roll pitch U in fixed frame. Okay, Z, Y, Z. What does it mean? I make a first rotation elementary around Z. And this is the graphical representation of the rotation I made. Then I made a rotation around current Y. It means that this is Y remains the same. And this is the second rotation that I'm doing. And finally, I made another rotation around the current Z. And this is what I'm doing. And just make post multiplications, because it's current frame, of the three elementary rotations that we already computed. OK? And just do it by hand or with a symbolic uh, toolbox but that's very easy so let's do it by hand and trust me this is the result uh, from now on every time that you see C or S with a subscript uh, of a Greek letter denoting an angle it means cosinus or sinus just to have it more compact okay so here I have, for example, cosinus phi, cosinus theta, cosinus psi, minus, sinus phi, sinus psi. Okay, I don't care. I don't want to enter into the symbolic notation. I just have to understand the operator, the concept. In, in, um, in robotics, you will uh, discover going on that the object that you are going to use cannot be unwritten anymore. Okay, you need to use uh, uh, proper tools. So we need to understand the property of uh, the various operator that we are going to meet in this class. And by understanding the concept, we will be able to understand the mistake that we are going to do 
when we are going to, to write our nice control algorithms. Is, is it impossible to write a code without bugs? But when you cannot go into the line of computation, you should be able to understand where the error is by other way around. Okay, so now I don't care about the specific of these elements. I, I have to, to find some way to understand what is correct and what is wrong. But okay, this is simple. We will have a complex uh, symbolic object later on. So now I have this rotation matrix. That's nice. What's for? Well, I can compute it very easily. But the problem is another. It is the inverse problem. If someone gives me nine numbers, nine numbers that represent a rotation matrix, so they satisfy the six constraints. This is a correct rotation matrix. And I tell you, OK, from this rotation matrix, can you extract the three angles of a z, y, z representation? OK, so let's try to do it by end. What does it mean by end? It means that here I see, for example, that I have a cosinus theta. And here I have cosinus phi, sinus theta, sinus phi, sinus theta. So I can say, OK, if I make the division uh, between those two, I have a tangent of phi. I have here cosinus. I can try to, to play a little bit and to extract the angles. Someone uh, already played with this trigonometry and had fun. And it came out that, well, you first have to impose that both the numbers in position 1, 3 and position 2, 3 are different from 0. And that theta is within the set 0 pi excluded zero and excluded pi. This notation with a round bracket means that in the interval, the extreme are excluded. So zero and pi are not in this interval, in this range, okay? Okay, uh, so uh, I can give you phi, theta, and psi. You just have to make uh, a uh, inverse tangent. Do you know what does it mean, the two here? Yes. No? Why here there is atan two and not just atan? OK, this is uh, the four quadrant inverse tangent. So I can have, uh, I mean, the, 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 the angle in the four quadrants, phi. But the point is that I know that uh, the inverse tangent is not defined in all 2 pi, of course, because I made this assumption. Otherwise, it's not possible to, to, to move on. And if theta is from minus pi to 0, I have a different way to compute it. OK, nice. And now, well, now, OK, but it means that uh, for theta equal 0 or pi, so when uh, the element 1, 3, and 2, 3 or the rotation matrices, matrix are 0, well, I don't have a solution. Or I have a degenerate solution. This is called representation singularity of the Euler angle. Theta equals zero. What does it mean, theta equals zero? Let us have a look of the definition. First rotation of phi around z. Second rotation of theta around current y. Third rotation of uh, psi around current z. Theta equals zero means that I'm not making the second rotation. It means that I'm making two rotation around Z. It means that I don't have any way to understand which of the two rotation, I mean, the, the, to, to discriminate between the two rotations. It is a degenerate solution. 
all the minimal representation of the orientation suffers from the occurrence of representation singularities. So the idea to have a minimal representation with only three numbers just failed because I cannot handle all the possible orientations with three numbers. Another minimal orientation representation that is still very used, and I will uh, tell you very uh, soon why, you are here, see, that is very used, is the so-called uh, roll pitch U, pre-rotation in fixed frame. It is very used in the aerial and marine domains. Okay? Not only robotics, I mean, that's technology. Uh, Roll pitch U in Italian is Rolio, Beccheggio e Imbardata. Those terms are common. If you take a boat to go to an island, Rolio, roll, is a term that you use normally. It's not or the pitch when there are, uh, when there are um, uh, waves. Okay? So this is the, the, the rotation matrix. We are not going to the detail, but only that uh, roll is uh, the rotation. Um, or marine vehicles uh, are uh, always more or less the same. You put the X going from, uh, um, uh, in English, Poppa Brua is from from back to four, the, the advancing direction. Then you put, uh, so this is the, the um, X. Then you put uh, the Z going downward and Y plus completing the, the, um, the frame, the left hand uh, frame. This is the common way you put the frame and then roll is a rotation around uh, X, uh, pitch is rotation around Y, and U is rotation around Z. Okay? Now, why it is so used, it is so common, the roll pitch U representation, if I just say that, uh, that any minimal representation suffers from this representation singularity. Well, the point is that the singularity arises when the pitch is plus or minus 90 degrees. Marine field and uh, uh, aerial fields, if you have a pitch of plus or minus 90 degrees, the representation of the orientation is the, the, the last of your problems. It means that something very bad is going on. So you don't work with a pitch of that value, okay? I skip this page because this is conceptually equal to the other one. And as I said, the singularity arises for a a pitch of uh, uh, plus or minus 0.5 pi. Now, do not uh, call it just singularity, but representation singularity, because we will meet another kind of singularity later on. So, don't have to make confusion. Okay, so this is one orientation representation. And if uh, by chance you are going to work uh, with uh, uh, quad rotor, with aerial robotics uh, or uh, marine robotics, you're going to use uh, roll pitch U 99% of the time. 
However, for example, in marine robotics, when you have a manipulator attached to the, the vehicle, well, the vehicle can be represented in roll pitch U because you don't want a vehicle with this uh, pitch angle. But the end effector cannot be represented with roll pitch U because it can be whatever it is. Okay. So you are here. See. Okay, so let us move uh, on the axis angle representation. Now, we introduce another parameter. So we have a four parameters representation, not a minimal one. The idea is to overcome the issue of the representation singularities, but we will not. This is used as well because uh, it is very intuitive, and this is very. It is used for uh, uh, describe the task required to the end effector. In fact, the idea is very simple. Say, okay, a rotation is nothing but a unique vector around which you want to rotate of a certain angle. This is the concept of rotation. So just give me four numbers, the coordinates of this vector and the amount of the angle you want to rotate, and that's all. And this is very intuitive, because if you want to make uh, an operation, with the end effector, for example, you have, the, in order to describe, for example, we want to weld something. It's very easy to, to, to represent the geometry of the operation with a unit vector, eventually with a rotation. Okay? So this is much more easy talking about robotics in order to describe stuff because it's a vector in the space, an angle. Now, I can obtain this idea by a kind of strange succession, successive elementary rotations. It is not necessary that we really understand in detail all of these five rotations. What is important is that I'm able to obtain this rotation matrix just assigning theta and r, okay, the, the, the unit vector. This is the only thing that I need to, to really understand here. And I'm able to have uh, the representation of this rotation matrix. This is the symbolic rotation. Okay, it's fine and it says nothing Here, I only have the coordinates of R and theta, okay? This is, this is what is important. So if I need to have this matrix, I just put those nine line of codes in a function, in a MATLAB function, input four numbers, the, the vector with the three coordinates of R and theta, and output the rotation matrix, so nothing complex. I can verify that a positive rotation around theta correspond to a negative rotation around minus theta. It's the same rotation. This can be easily verified. And it's what I told you. Okay, the inverse problem is a little bit better in the sense that uh, I have uh, a representation singularity for theta equal zero. But theta equal zero means that I don't have a rotation. Okay? But still, if I want to implement everything in a, a automatic control algorithm, I need the solution without representation singularities. And this is our last orientation representation. That is the less intuitive one, okay? Because this is intuitive. It's just a, a direction and 
an angle around which rotate. Roll pitch U are very, very easy to understand. Rotation a little bit less easy. There are nine numbers, but this is really the first step. And yes, I can understand with the, with the, with the interpretation of the projection. Of course, not the first time that I see the rotation matrix, but when I use it, I, I, I can become familiar with the concept and understand a little bit better what's going on. What is really not intuitive is what we are going to do now. That is the unit quaternion. The unit quaternion has been introduced for another reason, not to, 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 to implement uh, an orientation representation by a mathematician that wanted to extend the complex numbers. Okay, so this is a stone that has been made, uh, has been put in this in uh, East Town when, I mean, where he lives. What is a quaternion? A quaternion is a four parameter representation. You usually find a very strange letter for the quaternion. This is a calligraphic uh, uppercase Q, but it doesn't matter, it's quite, kind of strange. But it is a, a extension, let me say, okay, uh, Hamilton uh, uh, discovered or invented, it depends uh, if you think that the mathematics, the verb that we can use with mathematics uh, uh, is uh, to discover or to invent new mathematics. So this is kind of a, a phil philosophical difference, let me say, uh, discovered. Uh, he discovered the quaternion uh, starting from uh, a certain idea to extend the complex number. However, let us uh, see the quaternion as an extension of the axi axis angle. For us, it's easy. If you look, if you, we look at it in that way, so the quaternion is composed by a scalar part eta and a vector part epsilon. The quaternion itself is not a vector. We will use a vector in MATLAB in order to to use the quaternion as a variable, but mathematically it's not a quaternion is a set composed by two objects, one scalar, eta, and one vector, x. The scalar part is the cosinus of alpha theta, where theta is the angle of a, a axis angle representation. And the vector part is the vector of the axis angle representation multiplied by sinus of alpha theta. Okay, there is a constraint, unit quaternion, because there is a constraint that the norm of those four numbers is one. Okay, this is uh, the constraint. Okay, so now I compute the rotation matrix. I have this uh, relationship between the four elements of the quaternion and the rotation matrix. Everything is nice. When does the, the fact that the quaternion is useful come out? In the inverse problem. In the inverse problem, this is the important point. Given a rotation matrix, I can always extract its associated unit quaternion. There are not representation singularities. Okay? This is a quaternion extracted by a rotation matrix. It's very easy. Uh, we will play a little bit uh, with uh, uh, um, exercises, but in the end, I will give you uh, some uh, functions in order to move on. We will build 
our uh, software in each lesson in order to arrive at the end of the class with uh, a set of uh, functions that are needed to make the project for the exam. But the idea, the idea, what I've done uh, in the past years is that we make the exercise together and after I give you the code. So if you didn't debug or didn't finish your functions, you can use the function that I put on the um, uh, on classroom. I will put or or they're already there, I don't remember, but don't use the don't use the former uh, code. I will give you, it, you know, when needed. So we will do all the functions in order to, to, to play a little bit with the orientation in order to understand it, but then uh, you, you can use uh, other stuff. So this is one important aspect of the quaternion. Uh, if I want to extract the quaternion of the inverse of a rotation, it comes out that I just need to change the sign to the vectorial part. So from the computational aspect, this is very easy two rotation matrices the, the the product of two rotation matrices can be done by just making this strange quaternion product i don't care to go into the details what is important is that i just write a function with one line that make the the product of two quaternion and this function represent two successive rotations okay, so it's very conceptually it's very easy now, if you're going to use quaternions in another domain, for example, computer graphics, or if you're going to use libraries from uh, anywhere, pay attention that the order of scalar, a vector part of the quaternion, is not written in the stone every programmer can decide to put first the scalar and then the vector part or vice versa you always have to read the help or uh, uh, the, the uh, documentation of the library you are going to use always okay i had one student a PhD student that spent one month of his work debugging the code that he wrote, one month, and he never, <laughs> he didn't find, no, it's not, I, I, it wastes one month of his life. Now, I, I'm laughing, but because uh, the bug was that he was going to use uh, a code where the quaternion uh, was written scalar and then vector part. And other part of the code with where this was inverted. No syntactic error, no numerical error, because uh, you have the constraint that uh, the norm is one, but nothing worked, of course. Okay. After one month, it found out this problem. So just a small recap of what we have done uh, uh, today from the theoretical part. And we will see rotations uh, all over the, the class. So uh, in exercise, in theory, uh, you just have to start to think about the, the meaning of the concept that uh, we saw today, but we will I mean, see them several times. So, so this is a, a, a small table that recap the pro and cons of uh, the various orientation representation. I copied from an online lesson of a colleague, I think is, is useful. Rotation, matrix, Euler angles, axis angle, quaternions. The first column represents how intuitive are. Okay. Uh, the only not intuitive one is the quaternions. Now, maybe you can tell that uh, none of them is intuitive but yes at the first day maybe but then the quaternions will continue to be not intuitive until the end of the class and also for me 
If you give me four numbers and say this is a quaternion, I'm not able to visualize what kind of rotation is. If you give me axis angle or Euler angles, I can visualize the rotation. Okay, it's, it's a matter of uh, intuition. Chain, what does it mean, chain? If I have to compose rotations, for example, compose rotation means uh, compute the rotation of the end effector by knowing the rotation of each link. Rotation matrices and quaternions are very practical in order to do this operation. With Euler angles and uh, axis angles, no, you, you have to compute the associated rotation matrix, then make the, 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 the chain, so the composition, and then extract again this. So it means that you don't have a closed form to make this chain. It's not a big issue, but. Uh, memory, well, the first robotics textbook uh, have been written 30 years ago. And uh, the computational issue was an issue. Sometimes you still find uh, um, comparison among uh, algorithms or among uh, representation of data uh, talking about the memory. For, uh, and in this case, you say, oh, here you have to store nine uh, floating numbers, three, so it's better rotation matrix. So now, this is, uh, there is a difference uh, of uh, three, no, multiplied by three of, of numbers that you have to store for each of the degrees of freedom that you have, because uh, all uh, the rigid body that you have in your problem needs an orientation representation, okay? In this class, we will have a robot with maximum seven degrees of freedom. An object, a robot, let me say that you will have a 10, or 10 rigid body in your environment. The memory is not an issue at all. Okay. Uh, it can be an issue for, for, for really uh, complex implementation. Uh, num, that means numerical issues. Rotation matrices suffer from numerical issues when you use it in a, um, automatic uh, algorithms because of the constraints, of the nine constraints. And you have to implement some code in order to, to, to keep the uh, problem numerically well balanced. Quaternions are nice. Representation singularities, uh, rotation matrices and quaternions are okay, we have problems with Euler angles and axis angle. Use in the differential way, so derive mean derivatives. We will see later on that here the quaternion is really the big winner of uh, the use in a differential way. When we are going to close a loop and to implement a control, when we, the velocities will come into the game, the quaternions is the object that will have, will not have drawbacks instead of the other one. So this is the last column we haven't seen today, but just for sake of completeness is here in the recap of the four uh, orientation representation, okay? Okay, so I have already said during the class today is not the orientation representation is not something specific to robotics or mechanical engineering. It is uh, really important in computer graphics. And if, if you have a look at OpenGL documentation, OpenGL is a li graphical library, okay? Graphics, nothing to do with automatic control, nothing to do with robotics. Well, they suggest to use Euler angles for the graphical user interface, but internally to use quaternions. This is the suggestion of the documentation of a library. 
all software libraries provide function to convert among those four representations. You don't have to do it manually. Maybe we are going to make an exercise, but when you're going to work in computer graphics and robotics, you are not going to rewrite the code. And you are not going to use the code that you wrote in this class. You are going to use the, the library provided by someone. Check the conventions. Roll pitch you in marine field is roll pitch you. In aeronautical field, a part of the community call it roll pitch you, but put it you pitch and roll in that order. And this is also something that we discovered after a lot of pain. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, all uh, for today. Uh, just one question. Some of you already asked to have access to the video. The video will be ready after a couple of hours. Google Meet takes one, two hours in order to make it available to me. And after, I will grant you access to the videos. Uh, I will try, when you ask me to, to have access, I will try to give you access to the Google uh, directory. In order, uh, I mean, by default, to have access also to the following videos. Let me know if it works or not. I mean. This is what I'm, I'm going to try. Otherwise, for every single video, and today we will have three videos because it has been interrupted, I have to grant access to all of you. I, I'm trying, I don't know. Okay, let me stop recording. Uh,